top of the morning to you. It's Martini Mornings and again we are joined by the wonderful Dr Arthur Chesterfield Evans for the Accountability Forum. I love having Arthur on because he's always a source of interesting information and uh, we're going to cover a bit today so uh, I can't wait for you to uh, hear it on Martini Mornings as well as we'll replay on uh, my tuner streamer and youtube so you can watch all of the episodes but i'm now joined with the wonderful dr arthur chesterfield evans who is medical gp in sydney but he's also activist politician what don't what what hat don't you wear arthur <laughs> shucks <laughs> i get by and it's so lovely to see you and to uh, have you return for our season two. We've both been busy bees. Yeah, I've at least stayed healthier. Yeah, my word. Well, I well I can't wait to hear about uh, all your travels around um, well Eastern Europe, which has been fabulous, and and dovetails in quite nicely to our chats about uh, the the Ukraine, Russia, and. Uh, all of the surrounding parts where you've just come back from. So that will be interesting. But uh, today there's been some interesting developments that has been going on for, well, it's been decades now, um, which is, it, it's known as, a, it's a cult, it's known as the family, children of God, and people of my generation will know River Phoenix was actually a, um, a child of the cult back in America, but it really landed in Australia on its feet uh, very much so um, in uh, the, the best part of the century last year in Sydney and Melbourne, Arthur. Yeah, it was a big deal uh, in the 1980s, I think. Uh, there was yeah. a big fight against cults. I don't know if there still is a fight against cults. Um, religious groups and better take... things now. <laughs> Sorry? We've gone on to bigger and better things now. Have we solved the problems? I don't know about that. I mean, basically, religion with charismatic leaders who lock up your finances and your lives and you can't leave with various... And, and, and quite uh, often, it's more probably such alive and well. your daughters as well. Lock up your daughters. Well, the children born in there, I think, have great difficulty leaving mm. um, these communities. And people get there and they're looking for something and they get uh told that there's you know i mean i i went up to katoomba just the other week like three weeks ago and there's a cafe there which is extremely popular but they are called some they are some sort of cult as right. well okay and they gave me a leaflet and I, I can't even remember the name of it but i thought hang on this is still going on you know <laughs> oh yeah but I'll tell you it's still going on there's still charismatic leaders going on um and uh, not paying tax yeah, I think that's a big feature, a big feature <laughs> of religious. Uh, I mean, I'm, I don't think there should be any tax adaptability for religion, frankly. If they're doing charitable works, let those charitable works be um, tax deductible. Yes. But if they are simply uh, pushing a religion of some kind, mm. I don't think the church should be subsidising, so the state should be subsidising churches. I mean, Absolutely. if you want to believe that's fine. If you don't want to believe it, that's that's also fine, but it's not up to the government to fund propaganda campaigns or give tax deductibility to, to, to propaganda campaigns. And I feel, um, I feel I a, a, a difference where money goes. I feel an election forum coming on, Arthur. <laughs> oh, I don't want to be anything, don't say anything political. I'll tell you how I got involved with the children of God. It was um, right. I was um, just minding my own business, walking with a few friends through. Uh, Hyde Park, where there was a festival. It was a summer evening. I was a medical student, I suppose. I would have been oh, 20, 22 or 23. Mm. And um, as I was walking through the balmy summer evening, this most beautiful creature came up to me and said, I'm a hooker for Christ. And I went, ooh, I was a bit shocked by all this. I wondered how much this, this goddess, I wondered how much she was christ and how much was hooker really i was just God? wondering to myself and thinking oh is this my lucky day <laughs> anyway uh, my girlfriend who was also in the group came over and she was of the view that i should not follow this path any further because mm. the younger said will you come with me you know and i thought mm -hmm. 
I just want to find out. You know. Quite an angel, yes. Quite yeah. an angel, yes. I follow this angel and see where I went. But um, my girlfriend at the time was not at all keen on this idea, and so we dragged me off. Anyway, in um, uh, from that place, shall I say. And um, it wasn't for some years later, which was in the late 80s, I think, that the fuss came with the, between the children of God who and, and DOCS, the yes. Department of Community Services, and that was also their homes were raided to, about some children to say said the children were being abused. Yes. The allegation was that the hookers for Christ were being sexually abused. Now and the and lawyers there was, them, there was about sixty seven children off the top of my head uh, in New South Wales alone that were taken from parents in in the in the commune, I guess, for want of a better word, in or off the property. Yeah, that's right. They were, they were dragged off. Of children. And there was a huge court case about it. Mm. And the allegation was made by the department that, that the children were being used as hookers for Christ. And the barrister for the uh, children of God said that this was just a phrase to catch attention and it had no, no exploitative function, right. shall we say, okay. right? Now, I was disappointed because I, I could have given them the answer, but alas... <laughs> <laughs> I, my exploration was nipped in the bud, shall we say? You wanted you wanted to test this marketing ploy, but uh, I, well, alas. I didn't realize it was just a marketing ploy at the time, of course, because I was just walking through the park, and you know, this beautiful creature came to me, and you know, what does a young man do when a, a beautiful creature says, "Please come with me"? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could be having a very <laughs> different conversation, Arthur. <laughs> yes, of course. Anyway. When I got into Parliament, which was what in 1999, um, a lot of people came to me and said, you know, Docs is totally dysfunctional. They do not look after kids. If kids are at risk with their parents on drugs or yeah. domestic violence or homeless or whatever, Docs is hopeless. Right? Mm. Mm. And a number of people said that to me independently. So it came at a number of sources. Mm. And of course, they'd gone to the government and the government said, you know, well, yeah, yeah, we're doing a great job. And um, what they and the opposition didn't want to do anything either. So they came to the cross bench. So I got the numbers together on the cross bench and mm -hmm. pressured the liberals who were the opposition at the time. And their basic position was if, if we can embarrass the government, we'll be in it. And if we can't, you know, absolutely leaks out, leaks yeah, out yeah. basically. Bring it on. But that was there. So eventually it took me 21 months to get the liberals to agree, but eventually I did. We had an inquiry into it. And basically what was happening was they had they decided that they had to have a lot of um, everyone reporting child abuse. So they had this phone set up. Phone line, yes. And, and it was a complete dysfunctional because everyone, every child that was getting abused got reported 15 times yeah. with you know people not quite knowing their names or where they lived. And, of course, the kids moved around. So that huge amounts of resources were put into this reporting system. Mm. But there's still the same number of people were trying to fix the problem. So that in fact the whole department was, and then they had mandatory reporting where every school teacher had to reply and every scoutmaster and every do 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 and every neighbour and it went it went that the reporting was was completely out of control. Anyway, the, the point was the department had decided because after the debacle in 1992 when they lost so spectacularly in the courts mm. against the children of God. Yes. Nick Griner had gutted the department, taken out all the middle management. Well, mm. in human resources, you really need the middle management. You've got the manager, managers at the top looking at the money, and yeah. you've got the new recruits just out of uni at the bottom, and with a bloody clue what to do. And so when there's a case, you know, what do you do then? You know, and you need your middle management. And if you sack them all, which they had, because you know, uh, putting people first by managing better was the yeah. slogan yeah. Griner had at the time. Yeah. Putting people first yeah. by managing better. In other words, managers know how to do things. Yeah. Well, I have great scepticism of managers. I think people who do the job and work their way up are the people who should have the power, not the people who parachuted in at the top with fat salaries and managerial degrees with no particular expertise in anything real. Yeah. But that's just the prejudice I have. Got you. Got it. Got it. So anyway, the gut, the department oh, had been gutted. <laughs> the department had been gutted, and all that was happening was when cases were reported, hmm. they were put on the desk of these tiny number of middle managers left mm. and basically if they weren't causing problems at the moment they just stayed on the desk and if they had problems then someone would have to go and deal with them 
And the only people that's dealing how, with that's how I this is how I parent, Arthur. You realize. Ooh, I wouldn't go speculating in that area, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I might get reported. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Well, keep going. You can do that with some we, kids, you know. We if the kids haven't got a problem, you can leave them alone. But but if yeah. they do, you can't really. The You've got to intervene early. Got, got the attention is what you're saying. Only the crises got the attention. Yes. So of course, anything that wasn't in a crisis yet, no prevention was done because a K, you can't do prevention as a KPI. You see, if you say I've spent end, end time with this person, I think they won't give a problem in yeah. in the future. So well, if you hadn't done it, they mightn't have anyway. So you wasted that time, you know. Absolutely. So when, yeah. when you take a very uh, economic view of this yeah. stuff rather than understanding the people, well, it's the corporatization of trouble. the public sector, isn't it? That's in essence trying to corporatize what is public, and uh, the, this is a fair example of how it doesn't work. Well, that's my opinion. Yes, I wasn't going to bring you that conclusion, but but I think that's true. And I think if you just <laughs> give people a contract to look after this kid, mm. um, what do you do? Say, so, well, if you if you if you don't look after the kid and in the next 10 years it gets crooked, we'll take the money back from you? Or what do you say, you know? Um, basically, you say, well, I'm looking after this kid. Now we'll just look after the shareholders here and the salaries here and, the, and uh, you know, and our expense account here and we'll put a bit of money in there, you know? So yeah. anyway, what this magistrate is saying and in, in this... Uh, so anyway, I set up the inquiry and it found that DOCS was totally dysfunctional. And the government... Oh. Um, the government uh, gave some money to it. But the only thing that was keeping them docs on track, if you want to put it that way, mm. was the children's court. And the children's court have to make orders that, you know, this parent or that parent will get um, will get custody or that, that this foster parent will get custody or this relative will get custody. And they have to have a plan in the, in the legislation. They have to have a plan for the kid's life. Sure, well, that's the, reasonable. <laughs> If the plan wasn't any good, the children's magistrate would say, come back in three months. When they came back in three months or six months or whatever it was, docs still would not have a very good plan. And they'd say to the docs worker, well, what the hell are you doing here? And the docs worker would say, oh, I only got given this plan yesterday. I only got given this case yesterday. In other words, it had been sitting on the desk in yeah. the too hard file or the not do anything file yeah. until five minutes before. And then the poor old docs worker, a junior person went off to court and was then crucified by the barrister, yep. you know, of the other side. So, of course, they were very distressed. Anyway, what happened? I set up my inquiry. We found all this. The government uh, put more money. Into it. They claimed a billion dollars over 10 years, although most of it was towards the end of the 10 years. Wow. And, leave my mm -hmm. and the head of the, prime, of the premier's department went to head docs. But again, he had no expertise in managing kids. I mean, he'd been managing money. He was, I think, head of the... Premier's department at the time, the public servant, right. but he had high ideas. But he went off, but I don't think he knew anything about prevention, and I don't think he had a department that actually functioned. Mm. Anyway, I did my inquiry, and the report came out, I think, in 2001. And then in about 2007, they had another inquiry done by Wood, the, the famous guy who did the inquiry into police corruption and pedophiles. Yes. You may recall Justice Wood. But what happened with Justice Wood's inquiry was they got docs staff to help him and the doc staff said well our biggest problem is the children's court oh. because the children's court were holding them to account yeah right? yeah 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 so wood wood's report said oh we've got to make stop the children's court giving docs a hard time mm. so they said how do we get rid of the chief magistrate because he was a guy called scott mitchell and he was making say look you want you want these kids they've got to have plans if you haven't got a decent plan go away, come back and when you've got a plan, right? And they were getting yeah. very stressed about this. So anyway, <laughs> how do we get rid of Scott Mitchell? We can't sack magistrates. Right? So no. they changed the law so that the magistrate, the person in charge of the children's court had to be at the level of Supreme Court judge, which right. Scott Mitchell was one level down in the legal justice hierarchy. Yeah. So they then put a guy in charge who, was, who knew nothing about kids and was going to approve all the plans of box, right? So the outcome of the Wood Royal Commission, in my opinion, was pretty bloody hopeless, actually. So docs still hadn't changed after moving, obviously. two inquiries. And now this is what, well, this is, well, 
40 years yeah, on. More than 20, more than 20 years since my inquiry. Yes. And we still have the magistrate uh, who's, who is uh, the children's magistrate now. Mm. And I think what she has done, and I'm just trying to read between the lines, the Sydney Morning Herald article was on Monday. Mm. She's taken the evidence from the caseworker and put yeah. it in her judgment and said, I find this to be true. Right. That's mm. the bottom line. And the, the paper's taken it up and said, you know, this is a pretty bad situation. And this is exactly the situation that there was 20 years ago, 20 more years. than 20 years. Mm. Mm. I don't think they understand prevention because I think if you've got no housing, right, and yeah. your welfare payments are way below survival level, yes. how are you going to fix anything? You know, it's very Drag, difficult. Dragging a bag of bricks around, Arthur. I mean, you know, just just attach it to the kid's neck and drop him off the the nearest bridge. I mean, really, that's that's. Well, a... what docs were doing in the worst cases, they would simply follow a sixteen year old around, a fifteen or sixteen year old who was totally feral, until they got to sixteen, because yeah. docs was responsible for them until they were sixteen. So if they had someone supervising them. 24 hours a day and they didn't commit any crimes mm. they just had to get them to 16 and, and they're out of jail and, and of course no. now that's but, actually changed and now you it, with foster laws as well it can go up to age 21 that you can foster a child wow. which is I, 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 indicative again of how sick our society is in terms of um, it's, it's under the realization that a child or an adult at 18 cannot leave home because they can't it's impossible to afford even um, kids or adults coming into adulthood in high socioeconomic areas can't afford to um, go to university, work at, you know, a minimum wage job and survive and pay rent. I mean, it's just impossible. So again, let's leave them with uh, the guardian, whether that be the parents, the carers, the respite workers until they're 21, because they simply, they, these kids, these adults, these young adults will never be able to get onto their feet. And I mean, that's just a, a, a very simple um you know, way of, of, of dealing with what you're saying. Let's not dealing with the housing, not dealing with the, the minimum wage being at scraping at um, the poverty level. Well, I think negative gearing is a huge problem. All this idea, if you want, if you want to get rich, buy a house on no capital, negatively mm. geared, get the tenants to pay the interest and mm. sit there and wait for the price to go up. Now, houses have now been turned into the easiest way to make money. Yeah in the whole world that's been going on for 40 years the prices of houses have gone up to well when i bought my house it was three times the salary of that i was on yeah. now it would be 10 times so that's a three times at least three times the uh, change mm. in real terms mm. um of and course nobody now four houses decades is that arthur what's the Sorry? time frame? what's the time frame when did you purchase your home your house I bought a house in Newtown, two bedroom terrace in 1976 for $20,500, right? That house now would be worth uh, about 1.5 million. Easy, if it's very So run the point is it's gone up, what, yeah. well, I don't know how many times that is, but the point is it's insane. You know, the salaries haven't gone up. My salary was about no. 6,000 at that time, six and a bit thousand at that time. And the Absolutely. house was 20,000, three yeah. times, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what, what you would get as a, a say, um, a doctor mm -hmm. working in a hospital now, because I was a doctor working in a hospital at that time, you know, is nothing, if you take that as a fraction of 1.5 million, it's, it's mm -hmm. negligible, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And all this is because we've had this negative gearing thing where you could make a huge profit, but you weren't really making a profit. The yeah. money came from the person who bought the house having a bigger mortgage. Mm. Nothing. The house was the same, right? Mm. But the money that you made, if that's the word, by the house going up in value was because the house value was kind of artificially yes. elevated mm. by the fact that it's a, a negative by negative gearing so i mean i don't think all this talk about housing i don't think until you get negative rid of negative gearing mm. and stop people buying houses as a speculative um investment yes yeah you, you you'll never get housing affordable for john and susan average you know 
Absolutely. Anyway, that makes it really difficult to look after kids if you can't have stable housing. And while you've got mm. people kicking people out at the end of their rental period, because if you don't kick them out, they resist the rent rise and the rent goes down, you see. If you yes. get a new tenant each time, mm. you can keep the rent as high as possible, which allows you to pay off the place faster, right? So it's a ca classic case of those with capital getting a better deal. But anyway, that's it's getting off the point. But the, the point is that if you're going to look after kids, you've got to look after the most basic elements. You've got to use the building blocks of a stable society in a preventive way. And if you're just getting a kid who's playing up or whatever and chasing them around so that mm. they don't commit a crime until they're no longer the departmental responsibility, mm. then the money you're spending on the department is being spent on the wrong things. And if you're then getting contractors to do it who are more interested in the profit than the than the kid, um, you, you you just get dysfunction on dysfunction, you know. Absolutely. You, you've just inserted a whole level of, of of a, of a new system of dysfunction, haven't you? You've just introduced a whole new range of issues um, that affect not only the welfare, but um, I, 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 is, is, is not in um, congruence with what, the, the, in the spirit of, of looking after the child, to be honest. Well, I think we basically have to say, you know, if we want an equal society and a fair go and all this sort of thing, and there's lots of talk about this, but you can't have a fair go when you've got no housing and an insufficient income to have a decent life, you know. And then when you start subsidising private schools and not funding yes. public ones, I mean, how on earth are you going to get disadvantaged kids to a normal life? With no income, no housing and inferior schooling. I mean, give me a break. It's not going to happen. Work. I, so I, we've got to think in a preventive way and put our money there, I think. Mm. Look, I totally agree with you. There's so many issues here that we need to unpack, but I appreciate you bringing the uh, the issue to our attention and uh, because it, it is ongoing. And I think it's clear from, from what you've been telling us is that things don't change. Um, that, you know, this is, this is, we've been talking about the same issues now as you have been uh, for decades. And um, unfortunately, the solutions are not forthcoming regardless of what what government or which party is in government uh which is uh terrible will you join me again next week to talk about uh, another issue that we uh, can scratch upon i'm sure i'm sure i'll talk about anything you'd like to talk about martin good luck wonderful wonderful well thank you for uh bringing that to our attention because that is uh, very topical and uh will continue to be topical whilst we are having problems within the department so thank you for joining me today arthur and uh, we'll do it all again next week here on martini mornings with the accountability forum with dr arthur chesterfield evans all the best martin bye mate thanks so much